Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message, When God is Trying to Keep You from Doing Something. When God is Trying to Keep You from Doing Something. Oh, some individuals, they love bragging about how they finally overcame, how I finally got what I always wanted. From a pair of shoes on their feet, to a human being in their arms. Oh, look at me. Look at what I got. Oh, how I finally arrived. But there were those years that God was trying to warn you in so many different ways. But yet man said, I don't want to hear from God. I don't want to see the writing on the wall. He treated these obstacles in his life like he was playing a football game. I'm just going to tackle this thing. I'm going to keep fighting and keep fighting until I win. And no devil in hell. Wait, er, wait a minute. Stop. No devil in hell. What If it is God who is keeping you from accomplishing what it is that you've always wanted to accomplish. What if it is God who is stopping some things because he knows what the future looks like? What if it is God that is holding you back? God who is keeping certain things from even getting paid. What? God who is stopping a trip from happening but that's my mother my father my sister my brother my cousin my aunt my uncle you can't tell me oh lord that you are behind stopping this thing because you see i have prayed i have fasted i have talked to counselors i've talked to all sorts of people oh this is somebody's cry and i just need you oh lord to make this thing happen i mean this has been three years and five years and how many people have i dated and how many people have i married and yet there's always a problem come on now lord i just need you to hear me out i just want this to happen can't you just make this happen oh this is somebody's cry And God keeps telling you no. And you keep acting like the two-year-old. I saw one not that long ago. Fall out right there in the mall. Just laid her little behind down. Crying. Lighting up the whole mall. See, 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 see what my mama's not doing for me. Mama looked around. She knew that if she snatched her up, there's going to be a group of people that's going to say, "Uh uh-oh, CYS. She knew that if she yelled, cuss, and fuss, there was going to be a group of people. Oh, emotional abuse. She knew that she couldn't snatch that little girl up in a moment. But the girl was crying out. Meanwhile, mama was getting the food. It just wasn't happening when she wanted it. So she decided to show out. Oh, but some of us, we (laughs) were thinking, well, we could take the little girl to the bathroom. (laughs) have a little conversation with the little girl if that was ours and so God he is looking at you you who keep right just just riding this thing out just whining like the little girl just falling out sometimes people are confused and lying prostrate in the church to somebody just having a tantrum Uh uh-oh come on that's why some ministers don't feel a movement If you will, a stirring in their spirit to go over there and lay hands. It's like they ignore them. You know why? Because that one's just having a tantrum, says the Lord. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. A revelation for somebody. You see, why, oh Lord, didn't you move me to go over there and lay hands on? Why, oh Lord, didn't you have me lie prostrate right along with? How come I didn't feel the Holy Spirit, that fresh wind, that anointing? How come it didn't take over the church and it was just that one? Because that one right there, he or she's having a tantrum. And I keep saying, no, that's what they're not telling you. They keep talking about, it's like there's a darkness over my spirit there. It's like, I don't, I just can't seem to win. I I just don't understand. And it's just the Lord, come on, telling all of us, no. Oh, it's not just me. It's not just that one that we talk about or those few over there. Oh, it's me. It's you. That thing that you want. 
or those many things that you want or that thing at which you feel is most significant, most important and everybody else, they're getting their blessings. And I mean, that is the norm, right? The job. I mean, I just want a job, but not that job. But I mean, come on now, everybody else, they're getting jobs and they're getting opportunities and they're making great money. And I mean, I need to be making some good money. Come on now, Lord. How many of us have said that over the years? And instead we got nickels, dimes and pennies. Lord, how come I can't? And then we found out, oh, there was a curse that was put out there in the atmosphere. But God, he has a way of taking some things and turning them around, but still, we wanted thousands. We didn't want hundreds. <laughs> Come on. Some folks, they said, I didn't want the apartment. I was believing the Lord for a house. Exactly. But you didn't get what you had been praying for. And when you did set out on a path, wasn't there some obstacles? And some of you all are saying, amen. And it's still going on. You go to the store and you got every intention of getting the snack. The snack that you know, technically speaking, you shouldn't have. And then there's some problems along the way in getting that snack. I guess it wasn't meant to be. Isn't that how we <laughs> reason to some things? And there's a whole lot of truth to that. It wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be. For some people, it was never meant to be. But you, you forced it. And so God allowed it. And now you're about to witness what's going to happen in the future. Oh, there's going to be a mama and daddy that's going to cry because God, he didn't call everyone to parenthood. Contrary to what some people believe. Well, my personal opinion is that everyone should have their own baby. <gasps> no, that's not true. God, he has his reasons as to why some people should not, ought not. But just because the bad thing that we said is going to happen, hasn't happened yet, doesn't mean that the bad thing is not going to happen. I need to get this through somebody's thick headed skull while they're spending thousands and thousands of dollars for some things. You and that partner is going to start crying. You and that partner is going to start arguing. Oh, why did we spend so much money on this? And then some people end up breaking up the very partner that we are right and die on this thing. We break up because it's too much money involved and he don't want to pay his portion or she don't want to pay hers. But this was our dream and this is what we wanted. And God, he said, no, not only no, to what you were trying to achieve with that person, but no to the person too. Ooh, Lord Jesus, you was never supposed to be with that one, but you wanted to make things happen because everybody else is doing it. And because the government and the city and the law said, oh, come on. You see, I can't seem to get a break. There was a lady who put up a TikTok video and she <laughs> pretty much showed us her whole dating journey each time she got all excited about each man one cheated on her another one he was gay another man uh he ended up having his share of issues come on she had kept running into these problems and you would think five six seven ten twelve fifteen twenty some you've been in the bed with how many of those men out of the group and you still can't figure it out, no matter what you did too, to make yourself better, you know, to make yourself more desirable and still you can't get a man. Come on now. At some point, that's when you have to say, oh, it's not meant. And I'm content with who I am. And it seems like just when you make up in your mind that I'm content, that's when interesting. Now there's more attention. There's more opportunity. You just might end up with your match until once again, ah, oh, that's not the guy. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> right? Or the Lord says, oh, okay. You keep crying and you keep having your temper tantrum falling out. Want the church to pray for you. Oh, take the curses and whatever else. When the curses, there was never any curses for some individuals. It just wasn't. 
God just said no, but now he's telling you yes. And you say, yes, yes. The favor of God. No, that, no, that's not, that's not. Cause I learned from personal experience. That's not yes. The favor of God. That's God just allowing you like that parent over the years that allowed us to go ahead on, go ahead on. Uh Oh, wait a minute. This is too good to be true. Mama said, go ahead on. Daddy said, go ahead on. Uh huh. You know why? Because they live that life already. They know what's going to happen. Not what you think. And God knows too. So he went on and he allowed some individuals to get some things. He ordered a release of what was being locked up so that you could learn a hard lesson, a lesson that's long suffering, Lord Jesus, a lesson for some individuals that's going to send them prematurely to their grave. Oh, wow. It's that deep for some people. Oh, it is while you sip your tea. And say, well, that don't apply to me because I already learned. I know that's right. Keep pursuing. Keep, you know, just determined. Oh, I am determined. I'm going to get this thing done. Come hell or high water. Ain't nobody going to stop me. And then you get it. Oh, you put those hours in. It was 40 hours at first. Then it was 50 hours. And then it was 60 hours. And let me tell you from personal experience, then it was me on the floor looking up. And they had this device that they were placing on my mouth. The paramedics showed up. That's how determined I was. Oh, that was next level crazy determination. Radical. Oh, (laughs) you don't tell me that I can't. Oh, I'm ridiculous about that sort of thing. And so I had driven myself literally to a place. This was years ago, not recently. (laughs) Because I learned, you see. But years ago, I had driven my place, driven my mindset to a place of madness. Because I was just that determined to be a success in my pursuit of happiness with my crafts. Because I had the many crafts. And I thought I could juggle everything. I had the wall, okay, covered in notes. I had gotten some of the biggest dry erase boards. When the paramedics showed up, <laughs> they, they were on the, they were squatted down and they had to literally lean their necks back to look at all of what I had wrote across those dry erase boards. I would stay up all hours of the night marketing over multiple platforms because the guru said that this is what they made. And I was like, Oh, well, that's what I want to do. And it seemed like the more I, utilize those tips that they gave me the more that things didn't work out and so I was finding all sorts of ways to make some things happen and then I would get I would get a uh, some breakthroughs I'd see some analytics and I would go oh, oh here we go all right now yes and then there was another hiccup and then there was another issue and then there was oh my goodness what is this and the next thing you know my mind my body my spirit My heart couldn't take it and down I went because while I was doing that I also had what (laughs) children children that were in diapers and I was in a relationship and that relationship was still budding and then I had two other children in another relationship and those individuals were hyperactive type of children oh yeah balancing four boys on top of trying to be the best at my many crafts, on top of trying to market all of those crafts, on top of, oh, your house got to get clean too, girlfriend. Come on now and organize on top of that too. Children got to get out and about. You can't leave them in the house all day. Otherwise they'll drive each other crazy and drive you crazy up. So I got to walk because at that time no vehicle and no driver's license. So we walking everywhere and it's hot outside. You who have the air conditioner in your automobile as you drive past and you see people in the heat. And I was one of those with children portion, a double stroller and two young boys as well on both sides of that double stroller with two boys in it. It was a sight to see on a hot day. And we were headed to the park of all things, which means that your body chemistry, right, is going to heat up. And you're going to get so hot to the point where you're exhausted. By the time I got back to the house 
and I saw my board with the many things and I saw, oh yeah, got to cook dinner, got to do this, got to do that. And the body said, no, you're not. Boom. Down she goes. So you want to make some things happen and you're determined and the Lord says no. And why was the Lord telling me no? Oh, upon careful consideration of all the other things that I wanted to do that I didn't get to. I realized at that particular time why God was not allowing me to be the success that I thought I should have been at that time because in God's eyes, the success was with parenting and being a good, at the time, partner, which later I became a wife. That was what that particular season in my life called for. Not all that other stuff. And some individuals was even saying, well, what's up with the man? I mean, a man, he can help you out, right? He can hook you up. You don't have to work that hard. But my dreams were bigger than his wallet. And the children's expenses cost more than what he was willing to budget for. And yes, there were many conversations and conversations turned into screaming matches and then eventually... God himself said, I don't want you to have any of it. Let's go. And so I had to take a sabbatical during that particular time in my life until some folk can reevaluate and come up with a better plan as to how we were going to get some things done. Because my mind was like, we're not going to think about anything else and we're not going to do anything else. And so it was shutting down rapidly. That's what some of you all would call panic anxiety attacks that turned into seizures. Now, you don't know your future. All you know is what is in the now. Some of you all, you got a good idea of what your future looks like based on the type of hours you're putting in, based on your analytics, based on what other people have told you, so on and so forth. But there are always those humdingers along the journey of towards success and if you don't know how to deal with those humdingers or you don't even have an idea what those problems might be then you're just going to press on even though the writing on the wall is slow down or stop do you want what God has to offer or no well yeah somebody says I want what God has to offer because I know not everybody who listens to this channel wants what God has to offer. Matter of fact, God isn't even real to them. So when I'm talking to them, it's like I'm giving them information like a Santa Claus or a fairy godmother, you know, a fantasy. And so for those individuals, I can't, I, I can't go there with you on whether God is real or what have you. You got to listen to somebody else's channel on that. But what I can say is for those that do have mustard seed faith, that when there's enough information that is pointing you in a different direction and it's not the direction that you really want to go and it's more of a direction where there's a stillness, there's a calm, there's a peace, there's a settling down and let's not pursue any more or anything additional or don't put another thing on your plate. That's God. When there is block after block after block, May not mean that you got to give it up. It just may mean that the time, the season is not right for you. I will tell you that when I went full speed ahead again, I focused in on one thing as opposed to multiple tasks. And when I focused on one thing, then I started to see that there were some victories. It wasn't, of course, as many as I would have liked, but there were some victories while I was pursuing one thing that I could manage. That's when there were other things that came into play that would take me away from that one thing that I was trying really hard at. Those of you all who are familiar with 
When Mothers Cry, the book that I wrote, Laboring to Love an Abusive Mate, Laboring to Love Myself. Those three books were during the season of all the chaos. And those three books was also during a time where the Lord was saying that you're going to eventually get a job. It's just that you're not going to get a job right now. And I wanted at that particular time when I was writing those books to have a job so that I could be able to take monies from that job and market the books. But what was hard for me to accept was that I couldn't market the books the way other authors were marketing their books due to a lack of finances because, hey, kids got to eat and kids need clothes. And the man could only pay for so much. And that was something that he wasn't going to be trying to budget for because there were so many other expenses on his plate. You see. And so God knew what was going on at that particular time. So I had to find other ways to make money and it wasn't going to be the traditional job because that wasn't doable at that particular time. We lived in California and those of you all who are familiar with Los Angeles County, you know what that rent looks like. You know what electric bills look like and you're running AC all day, every day. And not only that, some of you all, you know that the bus system at times, depending on where you are, it's a hit or miss. That's why a lot of individuals have cars. So it wasn't a good time. It wasn't a good place to be pursuing a whole lot of things all at once. You see, but is it ever a good time to pursue a whole lot of things all at once? Well, there are some individuals we could have asked and we could have brought on this particular audio, but they're dead. Be, and I will tell you that their answer would be no. No. Trying to be all things to everybody? No. Trying to do everything all at once? No. You'll drive your you'll drive yourself mad. Some of you all, God is telling you in so many different ways but are you listening god is showing you that this is okay this right here has always been okay this particular project this particular task this particular environment that you're nurturing this particular place right or relationship what have you but all this other stuff that you got going on over here no now, some folks are flipping some things around. They're saying, okay, this was good for yesteryear. And that's the season I'm in. There were some things that were good for yesteryear. And we had a good run. But now some of those things are being faded out. And God is moving me in other directions for this particular time in my life because he knows what my mindset is like. He knows I can only take but so much as I'm moving into with some of you all would call change of life or menopause. And I got enough sense to know that when I'm not right in my mindset and my body is not where it should be, I'm not talking to anyone. The Lord, he will shut my mouth. And some of you all, there's a season. There's a season where you are to be quiet and stop with all of the lashing out and getting angry and going off and you know long speeches and whatever else he will shut our mouths up won't he <laughs> say i got a work to do in you and it's not the work that you've been i just wish in those temper tantrums and i just want in those temper tantrums and i just need and then there's the anger and god didn't give me what i want and so i don't have time for the Lord. I don't believe in God. Oh, I heard that over the years with some individuals. Or I don't have the kind of faith that you have. Because of all of what the Lord allowed to happen to me. 
And the Lord is saying, I was there to warn some of you all about some of the things that you got yourself involved in. And I was there to tell you why you shouldn't be with that individual. And didn't you remember when you saw the movie or you saw the video or you listened to the speaker on YouTube and they gave you the red flag warning signs and yet you went on and made some things happen and maybe that person made you feel some kind of way for a season, but now that person has taken so much from you? Come on. Because you weren't supposed to be with them from the start if you humble yourself long enough and accept the fact that you made mistakes. Or the individuals who always wanted to be a parent and then as quiet as it's kept behind closed doors, they wish that they never were parents. But hey, this is my lot in life. I made my bed so I'll go ahead on and I'll do what I need to do. Hence when mothers cry. I keep it 100 with you. I don't sit up here and sugarcoat and say, oh, it was just beautiful when the Lord gave me what I wanted. Not necessarily what he wanted, but what I wanted. No, it wasn't. It wasn't because I ended up having to work harder than I've ever had to work before in my life. Had I just listened. Come on, some of you all. But the Lord, though, he'll turn those regrets around. He'll turn the resentments around. He'll turn the anger around. And the next thing you know, he puts you in this headspace as if you had always wanted it. <laughs> His what he wanted for you, not what you wanted, as if you had always wanted what he wanted. And then you think about it. You say, I didn't always want what God wanted for my life. <laughs> but because you finally took your hands off the steering wheel and said, I'm going to get out this car and I'm going to let God drive this car. Now, come on now. <laughs> can I tell you, God can appoint a driver to drive you where you need to go because he knows that you're ill-equipped mentally to drive on that day. I mean, that's why we got some gifted drivers. Because of all the folks out here who think they can drive and they really can't. <laughs> Some of you all can say an amen on that, right? Who said that this person should get their driver's license? And then they get their driver's license after all these obstacles, all of this trouble. And then, oh my goodness, they're out here on the road. I know God didn't call that person to drive. <laughs> Some of you all, you say, I may not be in the God like that, but I know that God didn't call some people to cook. Lord Jesus, that's why we got some of the most talented cooks out here. Why are you sitting up there struggling, eating somebody's food, and you know that they don't cook as well as they should or could, or maybe it just was never their calling. <laughs> Some other people, oh no, I know God did not call this person to work for us. Mm -mm, you, nope, somebody lied on their resume. Mm -hmm. They probably took somebody else's resume and then put their name on it. Uh-huh, because this person don't know what they're doing. Exactly. But they wanted this organ wanted to be a part of this organization so bad. They, pr they just prayed, they cried. They wanted connections within the establishment. And they got it. They finally got in. And now even they know, oh, I'm sorry, Lord, this isn't for me. This isn't my calling. Exactly. That's why I blocked it. That's why you didn't finish your degree. As quiet as it's kept. Some things you just aren't called to. Had you listened to me early on, I could have saved you a whole lot of money. I know God spoke to us about a lot of things. Some people said, but no, it had to be, it had to be the right path for you because you know, you're so good at it. We could be good at a lot of things, but it doesn't mean that that's the path that we should be on because there's so many paths that didn't have to cost us as much money as it did. Had we had knowledgeable people around us, had we had the hookup, had some people say, look, listen, I'm not going to have my kids paying for a bunch of college. I'm going to go ahead on and I'm going to get a job. <laughs> over at the college you see because i'm i'm the kind of person that i believe that whatever you are let's say you yourself leaving god out of it but whatever you are going to pursue at least find a job that you can get a discount you know on the supplies on the materials you know at least save yourself some money because like the, so many small business owners who just started out told me they said well 
you know, I don't want to be spending a bunch of money because I don't know if this is something that I want to continue to pursue after a year. So they're giving themselves a year, many of these people, a year. Because why? They know they picked it out. You can't tell me that God, because if God picked it out, you don't just stick with something for a year. I noticed that with him. If it is something that is deep down in your spirit, I mean, we're talking about you've been called, not, you know, a temporary situation where he has you there in the meantime. We're not talking about in the meantime experiences. We're talking about like, this is a calling on my life, this type of thing. And that's not a, that's not something that you just try out for a year. You see, you are pursuing that thing. You are studying. You are showing that self-approved and God does it. Well, duty calls. And I guess this message ended at the right time. I thank you as always for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube, Enum Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment, and we do welcome giving. Blessings to you.